you need to perform your Tuesday evening havan. Jai Sita Ram and Namaste everyone. Radhe 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 Govind Gopal Nacho Radhe Radhe Radhe
राधे राधे हरि मुरली बजे Radhe Radhe and welcome to everyone. This evening's satsang will be conducted by Sushri Sideshwari Devi Ji. Sushri Sideshwari Devi Ji, addressed as Didi Ji, is the founder of Radha Madhav Society, a non-profit charitable organization, which is a part of the worldwide Jagat Guru Kripal Parishad. Radha Madhav Society is serving devotees in Trinidad, Canada, and the US. For the past 35 years, DDG has been bringing the true message of the Vedas, Vedant, Purans, Gita, and Ramayana to all. DDG is a direct disciple of the Venerable Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj, the fifth original Jagat Guru. She was born in India, but raised and educated mostly in Canada. She holds a BA Honours in Languages and Linguistics from York University in Toronto. DDG travels to many countries of the world and she is based in Atlanta, USA, where she inaugurated Yuval Kunj, a Radha Krishna temple and community center in 2015. She has also founded Shamasham Dham Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the US. DDG serves seekers throughout the year by giving enlightening lectures, guiding family retreats and youth camps and conducting satsangs. DDG is fully committed to realizing the divine vision of her guru, which is to reveal the simplest and most effective path leading to peace and happiness for all. She is an eloquent speaker who not only teaches the theory, but also reveals the practical aspects of spirituality that can be followed in daily life. At this time, we'd like to humbly request DDG to begin this evening's satsang, Jai Shirati. Boliye Vrindavan Bihari Lal ki jai Siyavar Ram Chandra ki jai Jagat Guru Shri Kripalu Ji Maharaj ki jai Prathamam Sadgurum Bande Shri Krishnam Tadanantaram Guru Pa Patmanam Trata Shri Krishna Stva Malat Manam Cheto Darpan Marjanam Bhava Maham Dhavagni Nirvapanam Shreya Kairava Chandrika 
वितरण विद्या जीवन आनंद बुद्धि वर्धन प्रतिपद पूर्णमृता स्वादन सर्वात्मस्नपन परम विजयते श्री कृष्ण संकीर्तन नम कमलना कमल पाय नमस्ते कमले क्षण यो ब्रह्माण विदधाति पूर्व यो वै वेदाश्च प्रहिणोति तस्म तग्वं हा वेदमात्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम मुमुक्षुर वै शरणमहम प्रपद्ये eternal seekers of divine truth let's now chant for a few minutes let's chant once again for a few minutes jay radha madhav jay kunj bihari jay gopi jan vallabh jay giri vardhari let's praise shri krishna bhagwan and while we do that Let's meditate on him lovingly. Jai Ram 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 Ram
Jai Gopi Janam 
बोलिए वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय रासेश्वरी राधा रानी की जय श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय devotional listeners now i kindly request humbly request your kind attention i would like to ask you a question please raise your hand if you don't have any stress in life i look around and there is no raised hand and that is natural because stress is a part of life it is a part of everyone's life if a child is writing exams she is stressed if you're going for a job interview you're going to be stressed if you're moving from one house to the other there is stress involved there as well if you are going to be presenting something to the entire to your co-workers there's a, an important presentation there will be stress and stress is not uh, not necessarily a bad thing it makes the student work harder it makes the ceo of a company work more diligently it makes the a person more careful in many cases stress is not necessarily a bad thing if it is managed properly it's fine because it's a part of life it's natural the problem comes when we don't know how to manage it if it is mismanaged then stress can wreak havoc in our life it will give you high blood pressure sounds familiar <laughs> it can give you high blood pressure it can give you stomach problems like ulcers it will prevent you from taking the right decisions and stress can be like a vampire that sucks the joy out of life if it is mismanaged if it's wrongly managed so we need to learn about stress and we need to learn how to handle it how to manage it properly so it doesn't harm us now there are two reasons only why we get stressed out one is that we feel regretful about the past and the second reason is that we are worried about the future that's it we're only stressed out about the past which we cannot change and future which may not even belong to us so while we are feeling regretful about the past and worrying about the future we are not able to live in the present which is uh, a shame because all we have is the present we are thinking i wish i hadn't or i wish i had if only i had taken that decision if i if only i had not taken that decision oh what was i thinking and we stress ourselves out and again all that stress shows up in the physical body as well and the mind we torment our mind or we are worried about the future what's going to happen in the future a businessman came to speak to me and he said i'm so stressed out didi ji i'm so stressed out and i asked why he said my business is just taking a nose dive it's just going further and further down and i asked then why the stress he said obviously because my business is going down and i asked well what is the worst that can happen will you and your family be out on the street 
He said, no, it's nothing like that. Will you or your family, you and your family, you won't have any food to eat? Will you starve? He said, no. Then what's the worst possible scenario? And he said, we'll probably have to move into a smaller house. And I asked, did you always live in a big house like you're living in now? And he said, no, we lived in a two-bedroom house when I was growing up. And there were six kids, and mother and father and grandmother. So you lived in a two-bedroom, two-room house with so many people in there. And now when you move, if you have to move, you'll move into a smaller house. And how many family members? And he said, it's four. Myself, my wife, and two kids. So you think you can live in a smaller house? I suppose so. You'll have enough to eat? Oh, that's not a problem. In fact, I try to eat less. <laughs> There's too much to eat, and there will be enough to eat in the future. So then why are you worried? And this is something we all need to think about. What is stressing me out? Why am I worried? Why am I tormenting myself physically and mentally? So worried about the future. What if that happens? It hasn't happened yet. What if it does happen? What if that doesn't happen? Just look at the worst possible scenario and embrace it. And then you're good to go. You're not worried anymore because you have already accepted the worst possible scenario. We can handle situations in life in two ways. One is ignorantly, the other is intelligently. The better option is to handle it intelligently. And for that, we have to go into our scriptures. Scriptures are, they are the, but they teach us how to live. They teach us, they give us lessons on how to live a life. And that's why those who accept the scriptures, and we know them as sant or saints, like Saint Tulsidas, Saint Sant Tulsidas, Sant Surdas, so many saints we've had in Hinduism, there are so many saints in all different religions. These people lived on earth just as you and I are living, but they were always so happy. One such saint is called Narsi Mehta. He lived 500 years ago in India. And he went through a lot of misfortune. His house burnt down. His uh, family was killed. But he was dancing in the streets. Bhalum thayum bhangi janjal Sukhi bhaji shri gopal Meaning? Gopal, or Shri Krishna, must have thought that this house and family members, they were a distraction, so he took them away. Good, good. Whatever you, whatever you want, just do that. He's saying to Shri Krishna. And he's happily dancing. He's accepting the will of God. And that is what scriptures tell us to do. Accept the will of God. Know that God is always merciful. Know that what is happening with you is the best possible thing that could have happened. And be all right with it. Do not complain. Do not find fault with God. You do the best you can. But other than that, you just accept the will of God. Intelligence. Wisdom lies in accepting the will of God. This is what our scriptures teach us. Mind you, they do not tell us that we should be passive and we shouldn't do anything, just accept the will of God. No, they say do what you can. Kriya maan karm, these are the actions we have the freedom to perform in this life. So do what you can, do the best you can, and then leave the rest in the hands of God. And Sri Krishna teaches us that in order to be stress-free, we need to take care of the body as well as the mind. In the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says to Arjun, 
ನಾತ್ಯಶ್ನತಸ್ತು ಯೋಗೋಸ್ತಿ ನ ಚೈಕಾಂತ ಮನಶ್ನತ ನ ಚಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪ್ನಶೀಲ ಜಾಗ್ರತೋ ನೈವ ಚಾರ್ಜುನ ಯುಕ್ತ ಆಹಾರ ವಿಹಾರ ಯುಕ್ತ ಚೇಷ್ಟ ಕರ್ಮಸು ಯುಕ್ತ ಸ್ವಪ್ನಾವಬೋಧ ಯೋಗೋ ಭವತಿ ದುಃಖ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೈಸ್ ಓ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಡೇ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಅಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೈಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಗೋ and the words are his words are recorded in the bhagavad gita which by the way is a small part of a much larger scripture called the mahabharat scripture perhaps you know that mahabharat scripture has 100000 verses in it and out of those 700 of them belong to the bhagavad gita which is divided into 18 chapters a dialogue between bhagwan and his devotee shri krishna and arjun so shri krishna says arjun take care take care of your body take care of your health because that goes a long way in handling stress too eat the right kind of food eat eat the right amount of food eat sattvic food food which is fresh food which which has not been overcooked or over fried over spiced food that when you're eating it you can tell what it is not the kind of food there's so much masala you can't tell well take a guess what is it i don't know i can't see it i only see the masala not that kind of food food that nourishes your body and therefore your mind as well food which is vegetarian fresh food food that, that hasn't been left in the fridge for 12 days and i say 12 days because i once visited someone and she was kind enough to host me in her house and when i asked when it came time to eat she said well i've had this food in the fridge for a few days and i'll just warm it up and i said i don't mean to be fussy i try to be very accommodating i'm trying to be i'm very ha- thankful you have me in your house but you know if you give me vegetables i'll i'll cook the food and she said i think you're too fussy <laughs> and i said no i don't think so <laughs> it's not being too fussy um that food has been sitting for a few days now so sattvic food is food which is fresh and etc and how much food should i eat my guru dev jagat guru uttam shri kripalu ji maharaj he would say that keep one third of your stomach empty keep one third of your stomach empty so don't eat like kumbhakaran <laughs> eating and eating and eating and then when it comes to sleeping don't sleep like kumbhakaran who slept for six months at a stretch ah oh, it's the weekend i can sleep till noon time yeah but that's harming the body and therefore the mind and it goes a long way in harming harming us in many different ways so sleep get get enough sleep don't deprive yourself don't don't think well i can do with 2 hours of sleep a night no you'll be uh, you'll be like a zombie the next day you will not be productive but don't sleep for 10 12 hours either our scriptures recommend 6 hours of sleep for most people with three exceptions very small children those who are very old and those who are sickly with the exception of these three our scriptures allow us 6 hours of sleep a night so shri krishna tells arjun take care of your health now you would think that the supreme lord of infinite universes wouldn't be talking about things like food and sleep but he is doing that because it's very very important there are so many factors that stress the mind and having the right amount of sleep and eating the right kind of food and right amount of food will help in preventing that stress now a lot of people today are stressed because of social media does that sound familiar 
You know, a lot of people, the parents tell their children, oh, social media, but they themselves are on social media a lot. Instead of talking to the children, they're, they're on social media. So it seems we have become very addicted to social media, and that is a big cause of stress in life today. It's a modern problem. It wasn't in the last generation, now it is a big problem. When you look at the pictures of a, a, a person who leads a perfect life, you have to know that's a fictional person, or that life is fictional, it's not real. Oh, she's got a perfect life. Oh, look at that couple, perfect life. Look at this family, look at perfect life. And no, they don't have a perfect life. But what are they going to tell you on, on Facebook and on Instagram? What are they going to post? Pictures of abuse? <laughs> Pictures of them fighting with each other? Pictures where they're being miserable? They're not going to post those pictures. And here we are looking at them and we think, I am the unfortunate one and everybody in the world, look at these people, they're so happy going on vacation here and there and just living it up. And related to this is a very important principle. If you want to be happy in life, if you want to be free of stress, always look at someone who has less than you. Always look at someone who has less than you. Don't look at the persons who have, don't look at people who have more than you. You'll always be stressed out. In Hindi we call it ninyanme ka chakkar. Ninyanme means 99. Where a person thinks, I only have 99 and that fellow has 100. I must get one more dollar. I want, I want 100 also. When he gets that one more dollar, he thinks, I still have 99. I need one more. And that never stops. He's always working to get something more. Always working to get something more. If we can control our desires, then we will control our stress. Desires are such that there's no end to them. The more you have, the more you want. The Ramayana puts it like this. Jo prati labh lobh adhikai. Exactly that. The more you have, the more you want. So contain your desires. There is a verse in the scriptures, a shlok, that says, Girir mahan girir abdhir mahan abdhir nabho mahat nabhaso pipar abrahm tato pyasha duratyaya A mountain is big, but the ocean is still bigger. The ocean is very, very big, but it's very large, but the sky is even bigger, even greater than the ocean. The sky seems to be endless, but God is even greater than the sky. Please pay attention. The sky seems to be endless, but there is someone greater, and that is God. Now, the God is the greatest, but, but, this, the verse says, Desire is even greater than God. Desire is greater than God? Yes, indeed. Because you can attain God. I, I was talking about the saints earlier, Sant. They who have attained God, they're known as saints. They have, who have surrendered to God. So God can be attained. You can know God. You can attain God. You can go to the kingdom of God. So you can attain God, but you cannot satisfy your desires. There will always be more, always more desires, more and more and more. Contain your desires and you will contain your stress. There was once a man who was, who was traveling and um, this was in India and he, in order to find shelter for the night, he went into a dharmashala. It's like an inn where you can stay for a very little bit of money or you can stay free of charge sometimes. Dharmashala. He went into the dharmashala and he, it was winter's night and there was hardly any space there. So 
uh, he was told that he would have to share it with the sadhu who is also sleeping there. So the man went there and he was given a, a cot and he was given a blanket. Unfortunately, the blanket was too small for him. It was a cold night. So sometimes he would pull the blanket up because it, didn't, it wasn't enough for him. Then the feet would get cold. He would pull it down and then the face, the upper body would feel cold. And he just kept on doing that. And the sadhu kept on looking at him. What is this fool doing? So when this man, he was doing this again and again, finally the sadhu said, my good man, you are trying to fit the blanket to your body. And this is not what you should be doing. You should be doing the opposite. Fit your body to the blanket. Maharaj, what do I do? Do I cut, cut my limbs out? No, no, no. Just fold your body, make it smaller. And then you will have enough blanket. There's a great lesson in that for all of us. Contain your desires. My Gurudev says, Khub tarsaya hai. Khub tarsaya hai, teri khwahisho ne tujko. Khub tarsaya hai, teri khwahisho ne tujko. Ab tu bhi in khwahisho ko kuch tarasti chhod de. It's beautiful poetry. Meaning is, your desires have tormented you greatly. In other words, we want something, and then if we can't get it, we become very upset. We become very distressed. So when we have desires, those desires torment us. So your desires have tormented you so much. And now you should get even with your desires. When a desire comes into the mind, just say, I don't want you. Reject your desires, torment your desires, just as they have tormented you. Get even with your desires. In other words, the mind says, you know, I want, I want what he has. Then say to the mind, no, I'm not going to accept you. Because all you're giving me is a lot of stress. I don't have money to buy what he has, and I have enough, so I'm going to reject you. So the desire is being tormented because you're not accepting it. These desires have tormented us to no end. So to manage stress, we need to contain and limit our desires. The happiest person in the world is not the one who has the most amount of wealth. The happiest person on earth is the one who has the least amount of desires. Least amount of desires. He's the one who says, I have enough. How many people you ha have you met in life who have said, I have enough? Those are the very evolved individuals. They are very spiritual pe beings, spiritual people who say, I have enough. I have enough, even when I share with others, I have enough. Those are the ones who are very knowledgeable people because they are following the scriptural teachings. They're following the teachings of the Vedas, the Purans, like the Bhagavad Puran, the Gita, Ramayan, and other such divine scriptures of our Sanatan Vaidik Dharma, commonly known as Hinduism. Now, meditation has been long hailed as an antidote to stress. We hear so much about meditation, right? Yes, meditation, meditate, and you'll be very happy. So a lot of people, they meditate on the breath, inhale, exhale, so they're meditating on the breath. Or a lot of people are meditating on the flame of a candle. A lot of people are meditating on the third eye. In this way, they're meditating. Meditation is very good for stress. It's very good to eliminate stress. Shall I tell you about the best kind of meditation? Would you like to hear it? Yes? I was so excited when I heard it from my Gurudev. It is the best meditation. It's called Rup Dhyan. Roop, 
dhyan. Can I have you say that after me? Roop dhyan. Roop meaning form, dhyan meaning meditation. Not meditation on the breath or the third eye or the the flame of a candle, but meditation on God himself. Meditation on not just God, but Radha and Krishna, meaning God with name and form. If I say God to you, you say God, some intangible entity, but Radha and Krishna. Meditation on Sri Radha and Krishna. That is the best thing to do to beat stress, the absolute best thing to do. Because if you're meditating on a candle or a flame on your third eye or breath, that's not going to give you joy. It's not going to give you satisfaction. It's not going to fill your heart with love. But if you do Roop Dhyan, it will fill your heart with love. It will give you so much joy, so much happiness. Roop Dhyan is to be done every single day. I have not found any method to beat stress which is more effective than Roop Dhyan. Conduct an experiment in your life. When you are stressed, feeling stressed out, just do one thing. Close your eyes and visualize and can you all please do that? Close your eyes. Visualize that Sri Krishna is smiling. He's right in front of you. He's smiling at you. Now he's coming towards you. He is embracing you. As he embraces you, all your worries melt away. All the stress disappears. Sri Krishna says to you in his sweet voice, My child, why do you worry? I am with you. I am always with you, always protecting you. You don't need to worry. Shri Krishna keeps you in his embrace for a long, long time. And you experience the happiness that you have never experienced before. Now slowly open your eyes. There are so many ways of doing Roop Dhyan. I've just given you a tiny little sample of it. But visualize that Sri Krishna is in your very own house. You can visualize Bhagwan Sri Ram. There is no difference between them. So Sri Krishna is in your house. He's walking all around. Or he's asking you, what is troubling you? Is any is any, tr any trouble in your life bigger than my grace that I'm giving you all the time? Then you'll have to admit, no, there is no trouble, no problem in life, no stress in life that can measure up to his grace. His grace is the greatest. So always do Roop Dhyan. This is the biggest gift that Jagat Guru Sri Kripalu has, Kripaluji Maharaj has given to the world. He didn't give it to just a few people who call him, uh, few people or select people that, who call him their guru. No, he gave it to the whole world. He didn't give it to thousands, he gave it to everyone. He didn't give it to just the Hindu, he gave it to everyone, regardless of the religion they follow. Visualize God, he is a part of your life. He's not up there in the sky somewhere. He's not intangible. You can touch him. You can experience him with your five senses. He's not just God. He's your very own mother, your own father, your beloved, your child, your best friend, your eternal friend, your Lord, your master. He's your everything. Every Hindu knows the prayer and join me if you know this prayer. 
ತ್ವಮೇವ ಮಾತಾ ಚ ಪಿತಾತ್ವಮೇವ ಬಂಧುಶ್ಚ ಸಖಾತ್ವಮೇವ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಿಣಂವೇವ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಸರ್ವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಓ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಮೈ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಮದರ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾದರ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ಲಿ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೈ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಫೆಮಿಲಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ನಾವ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲಿವ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಟ್ರೂ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟ್ರೂ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟ್ರೂ so when you do roop dhyan accept him to be your everything you're feeling troubled by something some thought shri krishna comes and take that thought that you have that's troubling you and shri krishna puts it under his lotus feet and he crushes it there you go no more stress now it's not as easy as that to do roop dhyan effectively you have to do something else first and i will talk about that but let's do a little sankirtan before we do that now as we chant please do roop dhyan hari hari bol bol hari
हरि बोल बोल हरि बोल हरि हरि बोल बोल हरि श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय टू डू इफेक्टिव रूप ध्यान और टू इवन डिजायर टू डू रूप ध्यान देर इज समथिंग एल्स वी नीड टू डू फर्स्ट एंड दैट इज सत्संग Satsang. The word is made of two words, Sat and Sang. Sat means Sant. Sang is association. Association of a saint. Not necessarily physical association, but we must associate with the saint in the sense that we are mentally with him. which means simply that you must embrace the teachings of a real guru a saint a god realized soul someone who has attained a union with god and who has now attained divine knowledge we must embrace the teachings of a saint because when we do that then we come to learn what the aim of life is by ourselves we do not know what our life aim is it's only when a saint tells us only when a saint explains to us look you are not the body you are the atma you are the spirit soul and you don't belong to this material world and the material world doesn't belong to you you belong to god and god only belongs to you only god belongs to you when we listen to such excellent teachings when we listen to such lectures then over a period of time we fall in love with god blessed are they who have a natural love for god and by that i don't mean that they go to god when they have problems in life and say solve it solve these issues give me what i don't have that's not love for god that's just being selfish and hoping that god will give what we are asking him for i mean love for god a natural and spontaneous love for god where the heart breaks for god and the mind wants to 
think of God. Bhagwan Ram says in the Ramayan, Mam gun gavat pulak sarira gad gad gira nayan bahanira. Bhagwan says, when you chant my names, then there should be three physical reactions that you should be experiencing. You should have goosebumps on your skin, your body hair rises. You should have a lump in your throat, you, your voice catches in your throat. You're not able to chant my name properly because you're so emotional when you take my name. And there should be tears falling from your eyes. Three reactions. There are people who have done devotion in their previous lives and when they're born now in this life, they, from a very young age, they are very, very much in love with God. They're very spiritual. Mind you, I'm not talking about very small kids who grow up to be like atheists sometimes. In the, in the childhood, they're, they're going to the temple, they're dancing, they're singing, and parents become very happy. It's a wonderful thing. But now the thing is, what will they become? How will they be when they become teenagers? And I mean, these are teenagers, or they're very young people, or in their, they're in the beginning of their lives. And they are very much in tune with God. They are very devotional. They brought that from their previous lives, and now they're building up on that. Love for God, a natural love for God. So there are people who are born with that love for God. But if we are not born with that, we need to work on it now, in this life. And for that we need sat sang, santaka sang. We need to associate with the saint. That means we need to, as I said, embrace the teachings of a saint. We need to listen to the teachings again and again. We need to learn how to practice devotion from a saint, a guru. The, the word saint is synonymous with the word guru. The saint we accept as our personal teacher, divine teacher, is known as our guru. He is one with God. That doesn't mean he's necessarily passed away. I mean, internally, he's one with God. His teachings will make all the difference in your life. I know they made all the difference in my life. They will make all the difference in your life. And then, perhaps earlier you used to stand in front of God with reverence from far away. But now, because of what you have learned about God, what you are learning about God, now you are able to love him. You're able to, you're not fearing him, you're loving him. A lot of people say, fear God. No, we must love God, not fear him. Because where there's love, where there's fear, there's no love. And where there's love, there's no fear. So we must love God. So in due course of time, there will be love that will, that will be in your heart. Or if there was little love, it will be big love now for, for God in your heart. And now you'll be able to do, do Rup Dhyan properly. Now you'll want to do it because it's backed up by knowledge. You see, devotion must always be backed up by knowledge. I don't mean complicated knowledge where you have to read the scriptures. I just mean that attaining knowledge, even if somebody has never been to school, that guru, that saint, will instill knowledge in the heart of that person. Even if it's a small child who is illiterate, but listening to the guru, listening to the teachings of a great guru, a saint, even the child will understand. You don't need to have higher education to understand that knowledge. So when you are in touch with that knowledge, and when you accept that knowledge, embrace it, then you will find that you are loving God because when you start to know about God, you automatically start loving Him. Jane binu na hoi paratiti, binu paratiti hoi nahi priti. The, the Ramayana says, first you must know God. Without knowing Him, you cannot have faith in Him. Without faith in Him, you cannot love Him. So the very first thing to do is to have knowledge of God. That he is mine, he belongs to me, I am the soul, the world is there. It's very nice because God has given me that for my body. But I am not the body, I am the Atma, I belong to God. 
the atma is amar ajar sanatan the atma the spirit soul is eternal it never had a beginning nor will it have an end that kind of knowledge and these people in my family they are my family members i must do duty towards them but i must have god in my heart i must love only shri krishna and i must do my duty towards my family my society those are my duties but they are physical duties they're not I, and then that love is to be reserved for god that's what shri krishna says in the gita the gist of the gita is that tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanuswara yuddhacha chapter 8 verse 7 arjun do your duty fight the battle but keep me in your mind at all times think of me all the time be a karma yogi so to do rup dhyan effectively and even to I mean, if you want to do rup dhyan to have that desire to do rup dhyan you must first do sat sang sant ka sang associate with the saint embrace the teachings learn how to practice rup dhyan and when you do rup dhyan and when you are have embraced the teachings of a saint then if you're still suffering from a lot of stress it means that it means only one thing and that is you're not putting in the work that is it my gurudev has written so much so many bhajans and kirtans thousands and one of them says shri radhe ju hamari sarkar fikir mohi kahe ki shri radhe ju hamari sarkar fikir mohi kahe ki i am protected by my swamini radha rani then why why should i worry why should i worry there's no need to worry because whether you call whether you call her radha rani or shri krishna one and the same when god is protecting me shri krishna is protecting me then why do i need to worry and there's a beautiful story in this context that i'd like to relate to you during the battle of mahabharat which lasted uh, 18 days one evening when shri krishna found out the vow that bhishma had taken that he will kill arjun the following day before sunset shri krishna became very worried and when evening time came and then night time came he thought arjun probably is not able to sleep i should go and console him i should go to him and see what he is doing how he is shri krishna walked on over to the tent in which arjun was sleeping and as he was approaching the tent he heard snoring sounds from within and he thought arjun is sleeping he went inside arjun was sleeping shri krishna had to shake him and say arjun 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 woke up and said my lord bhagwan aap yahan you are here what brings you here in the middle of the night Arjun how is it that you are sleeping at night Maharaj is night time i'm sleeping Arjun don't you know the vow that that Bhishma Pitama the grand sire Bhishma has taken oh Arjun was yawning he said yes i've heard about that <coughs> i i know about that and you're still sleeping you're not worried that you'll be killed tomorrow maharaj why should i worry why should you worry what i'm saying is why should both of us worry <laughs> you're so worried about me you're so concerned about me that you're not able to sleep at night my life is in your hands do what you will with me why should i worry and that is the attitude we sh- we must take why should i worry when he is so worried about me he is so concerned about me he has me in the palm of his hands and why should i worry and that is not something fictional that is a truth that he has us he has he has me in the palm of his hands he's picking me up like this why should i worry what need do i have to worry why we worry is because we have we lack faith if we are lacking in faith we will become worried we do become worried because we are lacking faith and the vedas say shraddhatsvatat shraddhatsv shraddha rakho 
हैव फेथ हैव श्रद्धा फेथ फेथ दैट गॉड इज माई प्रोटेक्टर ही विल प्रोटेक्ट मी एंड वट एवर ही डज विल बी द बेस्ट थिंग फॉर मी सो अ ट्रू डिवोटी वन हु हैज फेथ थिंक्स लाइक दिस perhaps shri krishna will give me life perhaps he will give me death but i'm okay with both because whatever he gives me is the best thing for me perhaps he will give me good health perhaps he will give me illness but i will accept both of them i will accept either one of them equally because whatever he gives me is the best thing for me perhaps he will give me wealth perhaps he will give me poverty and i'm ready for both of them it doesn't matter what he gives me because what he gives me is the best thing for me and that is the kind of faith we need to have when we have that faith then how can stress come near our mind it cannot there is no shortcut there is no quick fix in this day and age when everything happens so quickly we are not willing to wait we are very very impatient we want everything right away right away you want long nails we we'll have to wait for a long time no no you can stick them on you can nails this long you want blue eyes me yeah, but i have brown eyes you just buy those lenses the blue lenses you have blue eyes you want something to eat yes but i don't have time to make any instant soup go ahead, just add water boiling water mix we are in this day and age where everything is so quick but there is no quick fix for beating stress it has to be in every day we have to put in the work every single day and there can be no quick fix and the only real fix is that which involves god roop dhyan is the biggest stress buster every day we must spare some time to do roop dhyan privately take the help of bhajans and kirtans sing the bhajans sing the kirtans chant the kirtans and do roop dhyan shri krishna is with me i am in vrindavan he is playing the flute near the bank of the yamuna river and the gopis are there the gwalbal the cowherds are there and the gopis are wearing these beautiful dresses i am also a gopi i am one of them just use your imagination and do roop dhyan you'll have so much fun i always notice that in when kirtan is going on there are people who are really into it and they really seem to be enjoying it and then there are those who are falling asleep <laughs> and so i know the ones who are falling asleep are not doing roop dhyan and the ones who are enjoying it are doing roop dhyan it's as plain as simple as that so life is difficult life has its challenges i'm not saying that life doesn't there are challenges in in everyone's life but how will you handle those challenges will you get stressed out and make yourself physically ill and mentally um, will you mentally torture yourself or will you handle it intelligently and will you then rather than looking for the quick fix will you look at the permanent solution and that permanent solution is in three three letter word which is god that's it without god there's only stress in life with god there is no stress in life but having faith in god is the main thing and then do roop dhyan and there is no stress in life boliye vrindavan bihari lal ki che श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय 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 श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे मे आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज स्टैंड फॉर आरतीज जयति जगत गुरु गुरुवर की गाओ मिले आरती रसिक वर की गाओ गाओ मिले आरती रसिक वर की गुरुपद नख मणि चंद्रिका प्रकाश जाके उर्वसे ताके मोह तम नाश 
जाके माथ नाथ पर हाथ करे साथे हुए माया मोह सब ही निराश आवे गति मति रति राधा मर की गाओ मेरे आर रसिक मर की गाओ गाओ मेरे आर रसिक मर की अरे मन मूर नारी नर
बोलिए लाड़ली लाल की जय श्री राधा कृष्ण भगवान की जय सियावर रामचंद्र की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय जगत गुरु श्री कृपालु जी महाराज की जय 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 श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे For Indian arrival, come be part of the NCIC's Indian Heritage Month with our four weekend calendar of celebrations featuring live shows and exhibitions. It all begins on Friday, May 6th with an evening of folk culture at 6 p.m. Then 5 p.m. Saturday shows on May 14th. Relax and enjoy lovely classical music. May 21st is a treat for local classical singing fans. May 28th, dance fills the stage. On the holiday, Monday, May 30th, is the Grand Cultural Show, Journey of the Indentured, and browse through the Heritage Exhibitions. From May 21st to June 6th, the NCIC's Indian Heritage Month at the Nagar Grounds. Free admission and parking. Join us on Sankhya Television on Saturday, 21st of May from 7 p.m. as we bring to you Shiva Bhakti Milan Satsang with Srimati Chandra Katwaru and Group. Exclusively on Sankhya TV. Hara, 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 hara,